Everyone, anyone remembers? Who all were there? Krishna Garwal Prabhu, Priyanka Mataji, Kavita Mataji, anything from last class? I was not there for the class. Okay. I start exams on. Okay, okay. Yes, Kavita Mataji. No, Prabhuji, I was also not there. <laughs> okay. Krishna Garwal Prabhu, you were there? Mansi Mataji, Priyatma. Yes, Prabhuji, we, dis we discussed uh, 5.18, which I remember that shloka. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so we chai was a package of Brahman. That one? Vidya Vinay Sampanne, Brahmane Gavi Hastini, so we chai was a package of Nitha Samadarshana. That one, 5.18. How everybody is a part and parcel of the Lord, and how the Pandit looks at everybody. And then the following shlokas, after that, um, discussing those. That was last Saturday, I think. Yes, yes. Anything else anyone remembers over there? Dinesh Pansore Pro. Dinesh Pro, you were there. Haribol. And I see someone by the name Charu. Uh, yes, Madhuri. I was not, uh, I didn't attend last week's class. Okay. You joined this today or you've been attending before? Uh, long time back, I attended one class. Okay. okay. But I already did full Gita. Oh, so nice. Uh, it doesn't matter if you start from here. <laughs> I love to listen all these things. Sure. Great, great. Welcome to the class. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. So I think uh, since many of you all were not here, I'll just do a quick recap. So basically Krishna is describing how somebody in knowledge, he sees the world. So humble sage by the virtue of true knowledge sees with equal vision, a learned Brahmana, uh, a learned and gentle Brahmana, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog eater. So Basically, somebody who's in knowledge, right? Uh, he's able to see everyone on the level of spirit soul. He has the understanding that we are part and parcel of the Supreme Lord and we are all equal. So in that sense, he's seeing not the external bodies, but the soul. Those whose minds are established in sameness and equanimity have already conquered the conditions of birth and death. They are flawless like Brahman and Thas are already situated in them. So such people who are in knowledge, who can actually factually see things as they are uh, or see that everything is, uh, you know, is not, is not matter, but actually spirit uh, and they're equal. So such a person whose mind is established in that sameness or equanimity, he is someone who's conquered birth and death. And uh, he's actually living on the platform of Satchit Anand. The soul by very nature is Satchit Chit Anand, right? Which means it's eternal, full of knowledge and bliss. Somebody who's realized that he is not this body, but the soul, uh, he's factually living on that platform and is already uh, in Brahman. Brahman means the Supreme Personality of God. Like that. Not that he's literally in Brahman and merged with Brahman, but he's uh, in unison uh, in Brahman. Just like uh, when a husband and wife, uh, they come together, they marry, right? Uh, so there, there is a wavelength matching, right? <laughs> there is a, a unity. So that unity or unison is called, uh, is, is what is being referred that one becomes one in Brahman, one in, uh, what you can say desire, right? Our desire, uh, our, de the Lord's desire becomes our desire, right? Whatever the Lord wants, uh, the Jivatma also, uh, or the soul actually also wants the same, like that. Then uh, Krishna goes on to describe further qualities of somebody who's, uh, you know, striving for transcendence, right? 
or or uh, somebody who's also close to achieving or achieved transcendence so a person who neither rejoices upon achieving something pleasant nor laments upon obtaining something unpleasant who is self intelligent who is unbewildered and who knows the science of god is already situated in transcendence so krishna is basically describing the qualities of a person uh, who's uh, achieving the liberated state like that so he is he is completely equal pleasant unpleasant situation he is fixed up uh, in his meditation on the supreme lord like that and he is not bewildered thereby right? such liberated person is not attracted to material sense pleasure but is always in trance enjoying the pleasure within so such a person he doesn't have to uh, you know depend on external things to be happy he is already connected to the supreme lord so intimately within that uh, you know nothing affects him actually and he is completely satisfied and in in trance in this way the self realized person enjoys unlimited happiness for he concentrates on the supreme and therefore he doesn't care for the external material things right because uh, what happiness will that give in comparison to being connected directly connected to the supreme lord so it's nothing an intelligent person does not take part in sources of misery right gyani this is a gyana stage an intelligent person does not take part in sources of misery which are due to which are due to contact with material senses o son of kunti such pleasures have a beginning and an end and so the wise man does not delight in them so somebody who wants liberation a gyani he doesn't uh, indulge in sense gratification because he know it's he knows it's temporary right and therefore he does not indulge in uh, sense gratification right? and now getting on to the shloka for today i've just like kind of quickly given the translations literally to summarize otherwise it will become a class in itself right there are several points prabhu ji uh, uh, prabhupad mentions in the purports here and I think uh, I get the recording from Partha Priya to upload it so that you all can go through as well. Okay, starting from Shloka twenty three. Uh, so let's chant the Shloka. Shaknoti hai va yaha sodum. Shaknoti hai yam sodu. Prakshari ra vimokshanat. ट्रांसलेशन लाइक टू रीड द ट्रांसलेशन Charu Mathe ji, would you like to read the translation? Just can you please make sure the number of look? It is five point. This is five point two three. I am presenting my screen as well. Okay, just a minute. Okay, I will see it in my phone. One second. Okay, I will just make it. Okay, it's super good. No Did translation. It's a translation. Yeah. Translation. Okay. Ah, uh, before giving up this present body, if one is able to tolerate the urges of the material senses and check the force of desire and anger, he is well situated and is happy in this world. So, ah, uh, what does it say? Before giving up this present body. if one is able to tolerate the urges of the material senses and check the forces of desire and anger he is well situated and is happy in this world so basically krishna is giving a formula for happiness right it's krishna's words right he is well situated and happy in this world so let's see uh, what proper describes in the purport if one wants to make steady progress in the path of self realization he must try to control the forces of material senses there are forces of talk forces of anger forces of mind forces of stomach forces of genitals and forces of tongue one who is able to control the forces of all these different senses and the mind 
is called Goswami or Swami. Such Goswamis live strictly controlled lives and forego altogether the forces of senses. Material desires, when unsatiated, generate anger and thus the mind, eyes, and chest become agitated. Therefore, one must practice to control them before one gives up this material body. One who can do this is understood to be self-realized and is thus happy in state of self-realization. It is a duty of transcendentalists to try strenuously to control the desire and anger. Okay. So, <clears throat> here it says, before giving up this present body, one, one is able to tolerate the urges of my, uh, material senses. So, for how long, a question to all of you all, for how long you have to tolerate the pushings of the mind and senses? Today, you understood this information or this knowledge, right? That we have to control our senses. Right. Well, if it was, you know, a time-bound thing, okay, uh, you know, just like when, when we have fastings, right, there is a parana time the next day, we know we have to fast from today morning till tomorrow morning, right, so there is a set time, and therefore, we somehow the other console the mind, <laughs> right, that kaltaki, but it's just a matter of 24 hours, or it's just a matter of few hours now, you know, once we are in the fast uh, during the day, right, so difficult fasting still is there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if 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 we know there is a set time limit, right? We somehow the other kind of push. Right. But uh, by this statement, what do you understand? For how long we have to tolerate the pushing of the mind? Whatever. Yes. I, I didn't hear that. What was that? Forever. Forever. Yes. But it's really impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> so, uh, right? We have to actually tolerate the pushing of the mind till death. Right? Maya is on a marathon. And Maya's marathon is... How long is Maya's marathon? How long is Maya's marathon? Forever. Yes. Right? 24 by 7. She doesn't give up. Her duty is to uh, constantly, you know, drown us in so many material uh, sense gratification activities. So, Maya's marathon is 24 by 7. So, we are in a precarious situation to guard ourselves, right, against such a formidable force, right? If you, if you understand, Maya is so powerful, right? It's like an ocean. And for us, one drop is enough. We are like those ants, right? That's an ocean against an ant. Such a formidable enemy. And it is lashing us left, right, and center 24 by 7. So we are in this precarious situation to guard ourselves, right? To maintain our consciousness, to actually tolerate the urges of tongue, belly, uh, genitals, uh, of mind, of uh, you know speech, right? Forces of anger, right? All these different. These are six vegas, right? One who controls these six vegas. Pacho Vegam, Manasakrodha Vegam, Jiva Vegam, Udrapastha Vegam, Etan Veganyo, Vishaheta Dhira, Sarvam Apimam, Prithim Sashishya. One who can control all these six Vegas or six forces is Goswami, is called a Goswami. Is, I mean, obviously, right? 24 by 7, uh, Maya is lashing us. Someone is able to control all these six urges forever, right? <laughs> Until death. Is called as Goswami, one who has mastered. Go means senses, and Swami means master. So, one who's mastered his senses is called as Goswami. Such Goswamis live strictly controlled lives and forego altogether the forces of sin. So, so is it possible for us? Most difficult thing. Yeah, fasting may have a habit, you know, kaise 
चौबीस घंटे कैसे निकलेंगे वी आर कॉन्स्टेंटली वॉचिंग द क्लॉक कब आगे बढ़ेगा राइट सो टिल डेथ बिकम्स लाइक अ मैमथ टास्क राइट ऑलमोस्ट लुक्स इन सरमाउंटेबल टास्क राइट बट वन ऑफ दी वेरी फेमस आई थिंक प्रोडक्टिविटी गुरुज in management he is written a book uh, small steps right so what that means is uh, you know, sometimes the task ahead at hand may be very humongous overwhelming so one should not become overwhelmed by the task are itna bada hai kaise karenge you know tension mein mar jate hain hum log ki how do we do this it looks impossible but if we break it down to the smallest possible thing what can i do next okay the road road ahead right like somebody wants to walk from uh bombay india uh to you know maybe afghanistan or russia or uh, you know uh, london he has to walk or or go on foot not use uh, you know flight the task may look like impossible itna kaun chalega right or maybe reach us for that matter right but if someone actually sets his mind with determination and understand what is the next best step i can do okay let me start walking that's the next best step he can do and start walking maybe he reaches from you know one area in bombay to you know some railway station from there he probably walks ahead down the tracks in one direction like that day by day if he goes maybe in few years he may reach us on foot and there are so many people who've done that No, maybe not us but some other places people have actually walked so many thousands of kilometers so uh, we need to break this down into very smaller chunks what can i do next right i am at this level of uh, you know sense control how can i push the boundary a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more like that you know slowly and steadily when when krishna sees that you are you know really determined and you want to do this right he starts he decides to help the same story i think i, I think i've uh, mentioned this several times the bird who lost her eggs to the ocean how many of you all know the story no nobody knows i don't know okay so <clears throat> there was a sparrow who had laid eggs next to the uh, ocean shore and uh, you know and flew to get some uh, you know some more hay etc to make the nest nicely right so the ocean uh, the waves washed washed up uh, you know uh, to the shore and and dragged the eggs in it so these were gone and when when the bird came she was so despondent and uh, she started uh, you know arguing with the ocean said ocean you better return my eggs right otherwise i'll dry you up the ocean laughed how can <laughs> you know like what will you do right and uh, this sparrow then started picking up one drop at a time and throwing it on the other side now uh, in how much time will the sparrow actually dry up the ocean sorry infinity never <laughs> yeah. right one drop at a time speaking up and throwing on the other side so while she was doing that you know uh, everybody was laughing everybody was thinking what she will do etc some people were feeling pity on her and uh, like that she became the talk of the town and soon the news reached to garuda who was the king of the birds is the carrier of lord vishnu and he was pretty impressed that this small little sparrow she is continuously deter- she is just determined and continuously picking up you know few drops of water from the ocean throwing out the other side uh, just to save her eggs so he decided to help and he came and challenged the ocean saying that you better return the eggs otherwise i'll join her <laughs> right i'll join her in drying you up now if garuda wants he can drive the ocean in a second <coughs> and you realized you know what is going to happen so immediately the ocean returned the eggs 
and the sparrow was happy so uh, although it looked like an impossible task but the sparrow was constant and is, is determined and therefore you know there is help from garuda similarly if we we are very tiny like i said we are like ants in front of the ocean oceanic maya right but if we stick to uh, you know uh, the task that we don't have to give up we don't have to uh, you know give in to maya maya is like uh, you know you give her little space and she'll suddenly occupy the entire thing right you you think are you know thoda sa chalta hai you know let me watch some tv let me do something which is not as per you know the standard or as per the scripture it's okay thoda bahut to chalta hai right when we get into that you give little space to maya and suddenly maya will occupy the entire room like that so <clears throat> if we, if we don't give up and if we pursue right krishna wants to see our perseverance so if you pursue a little bit the lord will certainly help and when he helps you can easily win like that so it's and it's not that you know one day suddenly we wake up and we are liberated you know so so long we were not liberated one day suddenly we wake up and we are now liberated and therefore suddenly we are able to control our senses right so it doesn't work like that one has to of course you know there's lord's mercy at any point in time you can actually suddenly you know be self realized in one second also if you surrender to lord you can become self realized but at the same time uh, krishna consciousness is a cultivation right it's a cultivation step by step uh, you know daily you have to push the boundaries more and more if you are pushing the boundaries if you are going ahead moving ahead right uh, you are progressing otherwise if you are if you stagnate if you remain in the same place you know there is a opposite force right if you remain in this place there is an opposite force which will push you back but if you keep endeavoring to push ahead push ahead push ahead your progress may be very slow but you are moving ahead against the force it's like against the current of the river like that so <clears throat> one has to keep putting efforts and of course the lord helps uh, right so one who is able to control the forces of all these different senses called goswami so one who is putting that effort putting that endeavor and is successful uh, is called a goswami right and they strictly uh, live controlled lives and uh, you know control the forces of the senses and uh, for for us to reach that level we need to practice right now not that you know jab hona hoga hoga kabhi nahi hoga right you have to put that effort right and then seeing your effort the lord will uh, best of his mercy as well so uh, it is our duty to actually strive strenuously to control desire and anger any thoughts any questions or doubts on this one and if we actually do control our senses if we do actually tolerate these urges you know what is the result koi bole kare main pura time tolerate hi karta raha right somebody might get frustrated but he krishna is saying one who does that right it's not that you know it's all miserable i am just tolerating he will he is well situated in and and is happy in this world so if you actually tolerate these urges <clears throat> it's not that you are already always miserable but actually you become happy in this world how सहन करते रहो और खुश रहोगे इज दैट समथिंग दैट यू नो इज इन अवर एक्सपीरियंस इज इट नॉट ऑपोजिट लिटरली हाउ मेनी से दैट यू नो वी बिकम हैप्पी बाई टॉल रेटिंग एंड रेज योर हैंड डिजिटली और कॉमन कैमरा एंड रेज योर हैंड It's an oxymoron, right? Mansi Mata Ji, you agree that we become happy by tolerating. So if you if if we put you in scorching heat, right in the Sahara, I am. <laughs> I am. I am in three months in Vrindavan, which is now very hot. 
right now very very hot vrindavan is very hot yeah so from the cold to the heat now you know but yeah because for radha sham sundar i mean i, I this is it you know so it is giving me happiness because see when we are tolerating a karma sa getting burned perfect exactly they are getting burned <laughs> so yeah we have to tolerate not for uh, randomly tall not randomly tall right yeah even if somebody actually controls tolerates the urges of material senses he still becomes happy because that's happiness mode of goodness right which is poison in the beginning looks poisonous right itna kadwa but it's nectar in the end the result end result is nectar the result is you are happy just like you know somebody doesn't like to get up early in the morning or you know student doesn't like to study it's poison right kya padhne ka khelne ka jaate right but if he does that nectar in the end right in the end when he gets good results he is uh, progressing in life right so similarly uh, like mata ji gave such a beautiful example she is in vrindavan scorching heat but then if that allows her uh, access to you know take darshan of radha sham sundar that's the bliss right? so tolerating a little bit here and there uh, and and krishna will describe ahead in in further verses actually that's the topic today right so he starts with tolerance here right how we need to tolerate these urges not given to our senses right there will be such an urge to speak badly to somebody who's been a little bit mean to us right there will be such an urge to uh, you know uh, take revenge and do so many things but if we simply tolerate these urges and move on understanding that is not good for my krishna consciousness right and that my goal is higher right that that is just coming up right in the next verse my goal is higher prabhu i i want to say something yes means tolerate uh, when we are saying that we can tolerate the, uh, that prabhu pra, uh, guru lord is only giving us power to uh, like uh, lord is so giving we, us what means lord is only giving us a power to <laughs> whatever is happening with us so to deal with it the lord is also giving us a power sometimes see people grumble ke me mujhe ye nahi mil raha time nahi milta ye nahi milta but uh, but somehow we can means i can means we can manage we can do like that i feel so god is only giving us a power to tolerate with the uh, obstacles or uh, whatever so it's it's all a play of desire to be honest so uh, see the only only freedom that we have in this material world is we can desire the soul it's actually you know encaged in one sense uh, by the three modes of nature and three modes of material nature influencing it to do all kinds of activities and actually the activities are also carried out by the three modes of material nature so literally if you see the soul is not doing anything the only freedom the soul has is to desire so it's all a play of desire right uh, we may be completely unqualified in a helpless situation like i said we are just like an ant it takes a drop for us drop of maya for us to be inundated completely but if we express our desire to krishna that krishna you know i am in this helpless condition i am unable to control my senses i am unable to you know uh, get out of this but i have a strong desire to serve you please help just this simple prayer right krishna sees that this person is serious he sees that he has a he has a strong desire and bases our desire krishna fulfills our desire as parmatma right he fulfills that desire by giving us strength to tolerate by giving us strength to or intelligence to manage our time in a way that we come for a class or to come to temple right so he is just krishna is just waiting or wanting that that you should desire him if he desire krishna krishna will fulfill the desire if he desire to be away from krishna krishna will, will fulfill that desire also <laughs> right he will give, keep you engaged keep you super busy so that you don't even get any time for it sometimes he may test you right you may have a strong desire he may test you that oh is he really having a strong desire so he may give you a circumstance where uh, you know you're not able to uh, get enough time to do but although you want to you really want to uh, but still you are stuck right uh, in a helpless situation and that time what do you do 
you may have a choice oh i can still spend maybe you know if nothing at least 10 minutes 20 minutes one hour right for the lord and remaining time i can do my business so that's the that's the time where krishna tests our faith how much faith do we have right because if we have faith that krishna is the controller he is the master so no matter uh, i don't have enough time but still i'll make sure that i chant my 16 round spend those two hours right if i show that faith to krishna right that oh yes krishna you are the supreme personality god and you are the master of everything you are in control of everything so why is it you know how is it very uh, impossible for you to you know influence my situation he is completely in control right if we show that confidence in krishna krishna will uh, you know honor your confidence and he will take charge of you personally and he will make sure what you were supposed to do in 12 hours you get done in 8 hours or 6 hours or maybe 2 hours and that you have more time to serve him and this happens this really happens okay yes. okay anyone wants to share any such instances in their own life where krishna took control where they realize that krishna took control completely prabhu ji today morning yes uh, i have been missing some chanting classes mm-hmm. uh, because of charts exam and my not keeping a little well so today morning i my eyes opened at 6 o'clock no 10 minutes before 6 uh huh and the class starts at 6 so i thought let me get up only i have still 10 minutes to freshen up and sit so today morning i could do the chanting so imagine without alarm you know because i wanted to continue nice so it happened today morning yes. so the the more we utilize you know facility for krishna krishna will provide more facility simple rule right the more we think oh i don't have facility how can i search no use whatever you have if you utilize whatever you have even if it's 10 minutes krishna will ensure that it expands 10 minutes expands to 10 hours prabhu ji i am not able to join in morning hmm. but uh, i go to temple i leave viva uh, to the school and then i go to temple and i do chanting there so i get time there perfect very nice father has we are ek hi jaye <laughs> great so uh, yeah that's perfect chanting in the temple is very nice so uh, one who tolerates these urges actually become happy because uh, there are two one is in general also without you know uh, specifically you know uh, having krishna in mind even if in general somebody controls his senses you know they become happy we see all these movie stars everyone right uh, to stay fit they have to control their urges of you know uh, stomach of the tongue to enjoy different taste etc and when they have a nice physical body they are happy right that's that's happiness and more of goodness but if someone is actually tolerating for krishna he is actually experiencing transcendental happiness this is what we talked about uh, you know being in vrindavan so this tolerance uh, can become sweet actually and we'll see how in uh, the next few verses as well okay yo anta sukhi antara at aramas swayam sukho antaratnam tathantara jyoti revayaha thant jyoti revya sayogi brahma nirvanam sayogi brahmane <coughs> brahma nirvana. brahma bhuto digachati brahma bhuto digachati someone can uh, read the translation please can i read please yes please one whose happiness is within who is active and rejoices within and whose aim is inward is actually the perfect mystic he is liberated in the supreme and ultimately he attains the supreme okay. so here krishna krishna is describing the parmatma vadi one who is actually rejoicing within parmatma vadi means one who is realizing parmatma within the heart so one whose happiness is within who is active and rejoices within 
whose aim is inwards is actually the perfect mystic he is liberated in supreme and ultimately he attains the supreme right so uh, in the previous verse we discussed right uh, that one one can tolerate one needs to tolerate these urges and how one can tolerate these urges not by uh, you know simply artificially giving them up but one can tolerate uh, or, or or unless one relishes inner happiness right actually that's the purport <laughs> okay let's read the purport unless one is able to relish happiness from within how can one retire from external engagements meant for deriving superficial happiness a liberated person enjoys happiness by factual experience he can therefore sit silently at any place and enjoy activities of life from within such a liberated person no longer desires external material happiness this state is called brahma bhuta attaining which one is assured of going back to godhead back home so unless one is able to relish happiness from within unless one is actually tasting the nectar of uh, you know the transcendental beauty of the lord uh, in his heart how can one retire from external engagement meant for de- deriving superficial happiness so again uh, you know connecting back to the second chapter uh, you know i think the 47th verse if i'm not mistaken vishaya vinivartante nirahara sidehina rasavarjam rasupyascha param drishta nivartate right one has to experience higher taste to give up the lower taste so here are proverbs writing unless one actually experiences that higher uh, taste or relishes the higher happiness of uh, you know experiencing the supreme lord in his heart uh, one cannot uh, give up so easily the external engagements which give us superficial happiness so it's very very important a liberated person enjoys happiness by factual experience it's not some imagination it's not some uh, you know uh, emotional thing here and there no it's actually a factual experience right you can experience krishna face to face right he can sit he can therefore sit silently at any place and enjoy activities of life from within so when you have krishna with you again this is on the level of parmatma but uh, so is true for somebody in krishna consciousness right Uh, so krishna consciousness is like the super set which includes all these subsets parmatma realization bhagwan realization includes parmatma realization includes brahman realization so uh, you know for a person krishna consciousness he can actually re- enjoy or relish actually anywhere uh, you know because he is constantly meditating on the supreme personality of god right so he is completely intimately united with krishna uh, you know and therefore uh, you know he does not desire any external material happiness this state is technically called as brahma bhuta right there is another shloka brahma bhuta prasanna atmana suchiti na kamchiti right? so attaining which one is a sure to go back home back to god any thoughts or questions on this one so it's basically uh, imperative for us to get that higher taste as soon as possible otherwise we'll fall victim to uh, you know these urges of the senses right uh, we discussed how how do we control urges of the senses for a lifetime right we may try for some time fall again try for some time fall again try for some time fall again that's what's happening to us right how we can attain that steadiness in devotion how we can attain that steadiness that we don't fall prey to these urges that is by getting higher taste and for getting higher taste it is our responsibility not somebody else's responsibility not even guru's responsibility it's your own personal responsibility right because the guru may give you knowledge may give you initiation may give you service it's up to you to do that service it's up to you to uh, you know apply that knowledge what you hear for example so it is your own personal responsibility to get that taste and taste will come when you associate with devotees taste will come when you uh, you know uh, immerse yourself in kirtan in serving the lord, lord practically in fact from next weekend uh, we are going to start we we're going to have these classes physically in the temple so that you know uh, you can actually come take darshan of the lord and uh, you know take prasadam all these different activities were missing out online we cannot serve you prasadam online <laughs> right so we are planning from next week onwards we'll be having these classes offline uh, you know in the temple of course those who are not in the city can still we we'll still have online but i strongly strongly recommend 
anyone who wants to develop this higher taste you know needs to come uh, come to the temple and experience this uh, you know one on one like that yes so uh, it will be the same time uh, 11 will start and uh, i think we've already booked a, a seminar hall in the temple as well i uh, will we, i'll i'll message which seminar hall but uh, around 11 we will start if if it's little uncomfortable we can you know push 15 minutes here and there but uh, we we'll, we would want to keep the time as much as possible so 11 we will start and uh, we'll go up till 1 yeah. so yeah it's our responsibility and we should definitely uh, you know practically engage in service as well not that we just hear ek answer suna this is nikal diya yeah even if we hear we meditate but we don't act on it we forget right so these classes are regularly there to remind you again and again of course and so that you actually practically apply the learnings right so, uh, through physical service and once somebody matures in krishna consciousness one uh, when one gets into practice of chanting you know chanting leads to shravanam kirtanam leads to smaranam remembrance then you can actually attain this state wherever uh, you know when you are in practice of remembering remembering the lord you can sit at any place and remember the past times of the lord and you will be happy right? you don't need even in the most miserable condition you will be happy i remember we were uh, in mayapur we were doing navdi mandal parikrama and it was super hot and we were uh, you know going from one island to the other in a boat and the boat journey was really long it was i think more than an hour and people were literally you know jaise wo frying pan mein hota hai na fry ho raha hota hai aisa hamara hal tha right we were literally burning we were trying to save ourselves from the heat by covering ourselves etc but it was too hot and everybody was kind of getting frustrated uh, you know because the boat ride was little long so then suddenly somebody started this, doing kirtan and immediately you know that miserable situation turned into such a happy situation people were literally jumping and dancing on the boat <laughs> such a beautiful kirtan happened and we did not realize when actually we reached the other end other island we were like completely ob- oblivious to the whole situation and we actually reached the other island uh, and we like, oh okay now we reached the island okay let's get off and we continued the kirtan so that's the uh, you know effect of <coughs> the holy names of the lord completely make you oblivious uh, to the external situation and that's what is going to be discussed further labante brahm nirvanam labante brahm nirvanam good morning yeah, everyone should chant try at least right not just two people <laughs> labante brahm nirvanam labante brahm brahm nirvana ट्रांसलेशन प्लीज Yeah, I can read it. Those who are behind the dualities that arise from doubts, whose minds are engaged within, who are always busy, working for the welfare of all living beings, and who are free from all sins, achieve liberation in the supreme. So those who are uh, those who are beyond dualities that arise from doubts, whose minds are engaged within, who are always busy working for the welfare of all living beings, and who are free from all sins. achieve liberation in the supreme but but only a person who is who is fully in krishna consciousness can be said to be engaged in welfare work for all living entities when a person is actually in knowledge that krishna is the fountain head of everything then when he acts in that spirit he acts for everyone the sufferings of humanity are due to forgetfulness of krishna as a supreme enjoyer the supreme proprietor and the supreme friend therefore to act to revive this consciousness within the entire human society is the highest welfare work one cannot be engaged in such first class welfare work without being liberated in supreme a krishna conscious person has no doubt about the supremacy of krishna 
He has no doubt because he is completely freed from all sins. This is the state of divine love. <clears throat> so let's understand this first. So uh, Prabhu is describing how a person in fully uh, who is fully Krishna consciousness, uh, who is fully Krishna conscious, uh, can be engaged in welfare work for all living beings. Right? What is the welfare work? Welfare work is to help others connect to Krishna. Right? He is convinced that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. He knows that Krishna is the source of everything. And without Krishna, there is no happiness. He is completely uh, you know, convinced of the fact that only when people connect to Krishna will they be happy. So the first class welfare work that this devotee does is connect people to Krishna so that they can also experience the same happiness and bliss which he is experiencing. Right? So this is the state of divine love. Right? And somebody who is free from sins can actually have that confidence, full confidence in Krishna. Right? And he can, when he preaches, right, people are easily convinced. So that's the difference between a, a Kanishta Dikari and a Madhyam Dikari and a Uttam Dikari. Three categories, three broad categories of devotees. A Kanishta Dikari is having Komal Shraddha, right? A very tender faith. The faith can be changed, can be broken very easily. That's a Kanishta Dikari. A Madhyam Dikari is someone who's fixed up. He is convinced completely and he is trying through his preaching activities. Uh, he is trying to convince others right, and help others to connect to Krishna. That's a Madhyam Adhikari. Then an Uttam Adhikari is someone who is completely uh, free from all sins. right, And he is, he is having no doubts that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. He is, uh, he is 100% surrendered to the Lord. right. So such a person, uh, when he preaches, of course, right, uh, just a simple statement, right? May not may not be very fancy, maybe not, you know, uh, excellent uh, orator, etc. Also, but just a simple, you know, talk that oh, Krishna is supreme personality. This is one line can change somebody's life forever, right? That is the effect of somebody who's a uttam adhikari when he preaches. Right? Therefore, when there are senior devotees uh, giving classes, we normally make sure that we don't miss. Right? Even if they say the same thing, what has been said before, right? even if we hear the same thing, but when coming from their mouth, the conviction which, with which they speak, it's a sharing of consciousness. It's not just mere words. It's a sharing of consciousness. So their consciousness is filled with conviction and love for the Lord. That is being shared with us. Right? So one should make sure that whenever they have a chance to Associate with an advanced devotee, you should never miss the opportunity. Right? And we will be calling you all that, oh, there is such and such, you know, senior devotee visiting the temple, you know, such and such sannyasi or a guru, he is coming and uh, giving a class. At that time, drop anything you have. Absolutely anything you have in hand, just drop it, come running to the temple, take that association. That one simple class can change your life forever. It will help you advance so much, right? In years and years of our preaching, what we may not be able to achieve, that one simple meeting, you know, one simple darshan, one simple class can do that for you. That's the effect of associating, uh, you know, with a highly advanced spiritual personality, right? Lava matra sadhu sang sarva siddhi hai. Lava matra means one fourteenth of or one thirteenth of a second, right? That's that's a lava, right? Uh, in Sanskrit, that is the division of different different units of time. They actually it's all, even divided further also, right? Uh, in Vedic uh, calculations, the time is divided into very small. You say, "Hamlo microsecond, nanoseconds." Bolte na, vesa. It's been divided very very minutely. <clears throat> so, lava is one of the units, not the smallest, but one of the units. So, lava matra sadhu sang one thirteenth of a second. Also, if you have association with the pure devotee. Your sarva siddhi hai, right? All perfections can come to you right? very easily. So you should never miss that opportunity. So such a person who has no doubt, right? He engages in first class welfare work for others. A person engaged on, only in ministering to physical welfare of human society cannot factually help anyone. If you're just trying to do some philanthropical work, uh, you know, trying to uh, help the body, Right? He cannot factually help anyone. 
temporary relief of the external body and the mind is not satisfactory the real cause of one's difficulty is the hard struggle for life may be found in one's forgetfulness of his relationship with the supreme lord so we are struggling why because of ignorance ignorance of our relationship to the supreme lord just like you know a rich man's son he's forgotten that he is you know son of tata maybe right and uh, he is loitering on the street begging you know for 2 rupees to eat something right? you may give him 2 rupees and he may temporarily eat something very small right but again he is hungry again he is in that miserable condition time love over and over again it's not that he is having any relief it's very very temporary but if you know that oh this fellow is son of tata let me take him to tata right and uh, you remind him and you take him to tata right all his problems are taken care of similarly when you connect somebody uh, the forgetfulness of his relationship was the cause of his suffering so here also forgetfulness of our relationship to the supreme lord is actually the cause of our suffering when a man is fully conscious of his relationship with krishna he is actually liberated soul although he may be in material tabernacle it's called jeevan mukta being here also he is liberated because he has established re established his relationship with krishna so any thoughts or questions on this one Oh, okay, let's move ahead. Kama krodha vimukta nam. Kama krodha vimukta nam. Nam. Yati nam yata cheta sam. Yati nam yata cheta sam. Abhito brahma nirvanam. Abhito brahma nirvanam. Vartate vidhatma nam. Varte vidat nam. Okay. Someone can give the translation, please. Can yes. I read? Oh uh, yes, bro. Please go ahead. Next one. Those who are free from anger and all material desires, who are, who are self-realized, self-disciplined, and constantly endeavoring for perfection, are assured of liberation in the supreme, in the very near future. This is a very very hope giving shloka for us, <laughs> right? So all that we discussed, somebody may say, "Oh, you know, I am not able to control all the urges uh, right away, right? I am not someone who is rejoicing within uh, inward, and uh, I am not a perfect mystic, right? I am not a liberated person, etc." So all that was a description of a liberated person, or qualities of a liberated person. What about me, right? So this is a very reassuring shloka Krishna is describing, right? those who are free from anger and all material desires who are self realized self disciplined and constantly endeavoring for perfection are assured of liberation and supreme in the very near future so what we just need to do is constantly endeavor for perfection we are not perfect that's okay but we should not give up the endeavor like i said if we push keep pushing further even if your progress is you know very minute krishna is noticing your endeavor krishna is seeing the determination with which you are moving ahead so if you are constantly endeavoring for perfection you are assured of liberation in the supreme in the very near future not very far away very near future right let's see the purport of the saintly persons who are constantly engaged in striving towards salvation one who is in krishna consciousness is the best of all confirms the fact as follows ृत्यूत्रिप्रेट as those who are engaged in transcendental bliss by following the lotus feet of the lord uprooting the deep grown desire for fruitive activity so <clears throat> simply somebody who is worshiping uh, you know krishna is able to control his senses very very easily 
compared to someone, even the great sages, they are not able to uh, control the force of senses as effectively, right? So there are multiple examples, like even uh, Vishwamitra Muni, we've already discussed. Uh, there was another sage, uh, you know, I'll just give this quick example, right? Uh, so Vyas Dev, he was actually writing the uh, Veda scriptures. So in one of the sections he has written uh, that one should not be alone, even with one's own mother and uh, sister. As, as a, you know, sadachar, as, as a thing to follow, one should not remain alone. A man should not remain alone, even with one's own mother and sister. So this sage, this other sage, he thought, oh, what, what has Vyas Dev written? You know, what, what is this, right? Uh, mother and sister, how can, you know, uh, someone think of it also? So, uh, you know, what is the problem in, you know, being with one's own mother and sister? How can, you know, Vikar come in that stage for one's own mother and sister? How is it possible? So he was doubting and he went to Vyas Dev. So Vyas Dev said, okay, you know, you're doubting, it's okay, I can understand. So, uh, you know, uh, he said, you, you'll come to know in some time. So then he left. So that day what happened was, uh, at night, it was raining, right? It was very uh, thunderous uh, rain and clouds and everything. It was very dark. And this, this uh, sage, he was living right in the middle of the jungle. And there was a knock uh, tuck, 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 at his door. And he opened. And there was a young girl. You know, uh, practically 16 to 18 years old, young girl, right? She was completely drenched. And, uh, you know, uh, she asked, ki, oh, sage, uh, oh, noble sage, I am lost in this forest and it's raining so heavily, I'm completely drenched, right? I need shelter. Can you please, uh, you know, uh, give me some space to uh, stay for the night? So the sage said, yes, why not? Please, you know, you're like my daughter. Please come, stay. stay. Then, uh, but then the sage uh, immediately, you know, uh, he, he saw her and he, you know, uh, thoughts started coming in his mind and he said, oh, you know, this vikar is coming in my mind. So he said, okay, you know, here's your room. Lock the room from inside. And even if I personally... Uh, you know, tell you to open it, do not open it. Yeah. So this girl, she went to the room, locked herself and uh, she was inside. And, you know, uh, the sage then, you know, went ahead to, you know, engage his own activities of, you know, offering things, etc. And he was about to sleep and, but his mind got disturbed and he was completely agitated and uh, finally, you know, he was not able to control himself and he ran to that room and he wanted to open the room and it was locked and he was yelling, please open the door, open the door, you know. And uh, this girl, he, she said, no, no, you said not to open the door. So then, no, I'm telling you open the door. And the girl said, no, you only instructed me, even if you say so, I should not open the door. So, so, like that. so uh, you know, and he was constantly banging, banging, banging. And then finally the door flung open. And uh, he found that Vyas Dev was standing there, <laughs> right? So Vyas Dev actually taken the form of this girl, very, very attractive young girl. And now Vyas Dev uh, was standing there and, and he said, see, I told you, right? So uh, Sanyasi or the sage's father, uh, or, or he should look, sorry, not father, but he should look at every woman as mother, right? So the young girl was your mother. Still, you were completely agitated. So, uh, you know, that's why I've written the what I've written. <laughs> so, to control our senses is extremely difficult. Even great sages are, you know, failing. <laughs> are not able to control. But the same is possible only and only when we fix our minds uh, on the lotus feet of Krishna. When we practically serve the Lord. Right? Then we can easily control our senses. There was a devotee by the name uh, Jaya Advaita Prabhu uh, in our movement, a disciple of Srila Prabhupada, just a few, uh, few years few, few years ago, left his body already. So uh, he was constantly engaged. Sorry, Jayanand Prabhu, not Jayanand, Jayanand Prabhu. So he was constantly engaged in serving the Lord, right? He would drive taxi to support the temple. 
and even while driving he was constantly chanting uh, he was engaged in several services he would go, go out on streets on harinam he would chant you know for 7 uh, 8 hours in the streets uh, after driving taxi he would actually uh, you know cook in the temple uh, when there was ratha yatra he would actually you know uh, personally by his hands build the ratha cart so he was constantly engaged and one day he was asked ki jaran prabhu you don't are you not affected by maya so his reply was maya who has time for maya <laughs> so he was so thoroughly engaged he had no time for maya so that's that's uh, you know the higher engagement of the taste one gets in uh, when one engages in devotional service and then you won't have time for maya you will be completely absorbed right so just try to worship in devotional service vasudev the supreme personality of god right and by that uh you know by serving the lotus feet of the lord it approves the deep grown desire for fruit of activities uh you know and sense gratification so in the condition so the desire to enjoy fruitive results of work is so deep rooted it's very difficult even for great sages to control such desire despite great endeavor a devotee of the lord constantly engaged in devotional service in krishna consciousness perfect in self realization very quickly attains liberation in supreme owing to his complete knowledge in self realization he always remains in trance to cite an analogous example of this right uh, so we'll skip the shloka by vision by meditation by touch only do the fish the tortoise the bird maintain their offsprings similarly do i also o padmaja so here in the shloka uh, the lord is giving an example just like how birds uh, you know they sit on the egg they want that touch and through that touch they actually uh you know raise their offsprings the fish they are constantly seeing their uh, eggs and that's how uh, they raise their offsprings the tortoise is very interestingly uh, it it is an amphibious animal it comes to the land lays the eggs on the land and then goes in the water and meditates on the eggs and that's how uh, you know it brings up its offsprings so similarly uh, you know when somebody is meditating on the lord he can very easily elevate himself to the abode of the lord simply by thinking constantly of krishna and engage in activities of krishna consciousness right uh here similarly devoting krishna consciousness although far away from the lord's abode can elevate himself to that abode simply by thinking of him constantly by engagement in krishna consciousness he does not feel the pangs of material miseries this state is of life is called brahma nirvanam or absence of material miseries due to being constantly immersed in supreme in the supreme that's the first effect of performing pure devotion service right kleshagni one is free from the burning of the material uh, forest in the material forest fire free from the pangs of material miseries okay. the first effect the very first effect of pure devotion service there are total five or six i guess yeah is a very first very first stage any questions or thoughts so far so we have three more shlokas in this chapter all connected should we do those three very quickly or should we stop here your call <laughs> you can tell me you want to stop here three shlokas Prabhuji. Okay. All right. Prabhuji, not audible. Yes, yes. Uh, am I audible now? Hare Krishna. Yeah, Prabhuji. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll quickly do the three shlokas. Prabhuji, But... we are not able to hear you. Mata ji, everyone else is able to. Correct. Yes. 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 Uh, you can check your speakers, I guess. Or if you want to disconnect and reconnect, maybe that will help. Okay, let's uh, move ahead. Mataji, if you're still not able to hear me, just let me know. स्पर्शा कृत्वा बहिर्भायाम 
चक्षुश्चर ब्रुवो प्रापन प्राणपान सृत्वा नाशाभयतरचारिण यतेन्द्रिया मनोबुद्धिर्मुनिर्मोक्ष पायण विगतेच्छा भय क्रोध यदा मुक्त सह translation pranka mata ji you want to read translation yes prabhu ji shutting out all external sense objects keeping the eyes and vision concentrated between two eyebrows suspending the inward and outward breaths within the nostrils and thus controlling the mind senses and intelligence the transcendentalist aiming at liberation becomes free from desire fear and anger one who is always in the state is certainly liberated okay so basically krishna here summarizes many of topics discussed thus far in bhagavad gita and puts them in context of achieving liberation so uh, here basically he is he is he is starting to describe ashtang yoga right so how shutting all external senses keeping the eyes and vision concentrated between the two eyebrows right not that we have to uh, go off to sleep etc right you have to half close eyes right suspending the inner inward and outward breath within the nostril and thus controlling the mind senses and intelligence the transcendentalist aiming at liberation becomes free from desire fear and anger and one who is always in this state is certainly liberated now this is certainly very very difficult <laughs> right and to be in this state always is extremely difficult <clears throat> even read and understand it was difficult <laughs> i don't know how yes. they do yes yes let's let's see what proper how he is describing here so being engaged in krishna consciousness one can immediately understand one's spiritual identity and then one can understand the supreme lord by means of devotional service when one is well situated in devotional service one comes to transcendental position qualified to feel the presence of the lord in the sphere of one's activity this particular position is called uh, liberation in the supreme after explaining the above principles of liberation in supreme the lord gives instructions to arjuna as to how one can come to that position by practice of mysticism or yoga known as ashtang yoga so here krishna is giving one one option you can attain this by ashtang yoga which is divided into eight fold procedures called yam niyam asan pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyana and samadhi in the sixth chapter of uh, the subject of yoga is explicitly detailed and at the end of fifth chapter it is only preliminary exp, exp, preliminarily explained so krishna is just giving the starting point for the sixth chapter one has to drive out the senses such as sound touch form taste smell by pratyahar pratyahar means no external disturbances i give up all the uh, other engagements right drive out sound touch form taste smell and then keep the vision uh, of the eyes between the two eyebrows concentrated on the tip of the nose with half closed lids there is no benefit in closing the eyes altogether because then there is every chance of falling asleep nor there is benefit in opening the eyes completely because then the hazard of being attracted by sense objects the breathing movement is restrained within the nostril by neutralizing the up moving and the down moving air within the body right by practice of such yoga one is able to gain control over senses refrain from outside outward senses a sense objects and thus prepare oneself for liberation so there are several processes called bandha and all of all of those things where you know one gives the upward moving air into the downward moving air etc there is a process in pranayam and yoga as well so by doing that for a very long period of time <clears throat> one is able to gain control over senses and of course he is uh, not engaging the senses in externally so uh refraining from sense objects like that this yoga process helps one become free from all kinds of fear anger and thus the presence of super soul uh, feel the presence of super soul in transcendental situation so after thousands of years of doing this one is able to feel the presence of super soul within the heart in other words krishna consciousness is the easiest process of executing yoga principles this will be thoroughly explained in the next chapter right one can do this or one can simply engage oneself in krishna consciousness right so therefore krishna consciousness is the easiest process a krishna conscious person however being always engaged in devotional service does not risk losing his senses to some other engagement this is the better way of controlling senses than by ashtang yoga ashtang yoga you withdraw the senses and focus on the tip of the nose just your vision right 
in krishna consciousness you engage all your senses in and achieve higher taste so that's the difference okay kavita mata ji you are still not able to hear us no prabhu ji now i am able to it was my problem only some okay. problem was okay okay the last shloka भूतानी of all sacrifice and or authorities or authorities um the supreme lord of all planets and demigods and the benefactor and well wisher of all living entities attains um, peace from the pangs of material uh, misery mis mis so bhukta ram bhukta means enjoyer so krishna is the enjoyer yagna tapasam he is the enjoyer of all sacrifices and tapasyas etc sarva loka maheshwaram he is the uh, you know master of all the planets and demigods suridam sarva bhutanam is the well wisher uh, of all the bhutanam all the living entities right natva vam shantim vichati one who knows this attains peace from the pangs of material miseries the conditioned soul within the clutches of illusory energy are all anxious to attain peace this is a one more peace formula right in the material world but they do not know the formula for peace which is explained in this part of bhagavad gita the greatest peace formula is simply this lord krishna is the benefit beneficiary of all human activities men should offer everything to transcendental service of the lord because he is the proprietor of all planets and demigods thereon no one is greater than he he is greater than the greatest of the demigods lord shiva uh, and lord brahma in the vedas श्वेतस्त उपनिषद सिक्स पॉइंट सेवन द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड इज डिस्क्राइब एज तम ईश्वरा नाम परम महेश्वरम अंडर द स्पेल ऑफ इल्यूजन लिविंग एंटिटीज आर ट्राइंग टू बी लॉर्ड ऑफ ऑल दिस सर्वे बट एक्चुअली दे आर डॉमिनेटेड बाई मटेरियल एनर्जी ऑफ द लॉर्ड द लॉर्ड इज अ मास्टर ऑफ मटेरियल नेचर एंड कंडीशन सोल्स आर अंडर द स्ट्रिंज एंड रूल्स ऑफ मटेरियल नेचर एंड लेस वन अंडरस्टैंड दीज बेर फैक्ट्स इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल टू अचीव पीस इन दिस वर्ल्ड इधर इंडिविजुअली और कलेक्टिवली दिस इज द सेंस ऑफ कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस Lord Krishna is the supreme predominator in all living entities including the great demigods are all his subordinates one can attain perfect peace only in complete krishna consciousness so with krishna consciousness we understand krishna is the proprietor he is the master he is the controller of everything even the demigods right and uh, one once one understands this fact right he can be peaceful and he can offer once one understands this he can actually start offering everything to krishna because that's the right thing to do because it belongs to him and when you do that you are peaceful and you're happy in this fifth chapter uh, this fifth chapter is a practical explanation of krishna consciousness generally known as karma yoga the question of mental speculation as to how karma yoga can give liberation is answered here with to work in krishna consciousness is to work with complete knowledge that lord uh, of the lord as predominator right you should understand krishna is the master and that's how we perform our work such work is not different from transcendental knowledge direct krishna consciousness is bhakti yoga and gyan yoga is a path leading to bhakti yoga krishna consciousness means to work in full knowledge of one's relationship with supreme absolute and the perfection of this consciousness is the full knowledge of krishna or the supreme personality of godhead so when when we understand that how we are related to krishna and we work accordingly that's perfection of our knowledge and perfection uh, of this consciousness is full knowledge of krishna so when when we mature in this knowledge we are completely conscious of krishna at all times a pure soul is the eternal servant of god as fragmental part and parcel he comes in contact with maya due to their desire to lord it over material uh, maya and that is the cause of his many sufferings as long as he is in contact with matter he can execute work in terms of material necessities so we are suffering because we think uh you know we are masters and we control things which are part of maya right so our illusion is that we have desire to become the lord 
of all that we survey but the very opposite and therefore we are suffering the very opposite is to understand krishna is the lord of everything that is around and offer everything to him that will be cause of our liberation from the sufferings krishna consciousness how it brings one into spiritual life even while one is within the jurisdiction of matter for it is an arousing of spiritual ex- existence by practice in this material world so we can awaken our krishna consciousness by practice in this material world the more one is advanced the more he is freed from clutches of ma- uh, matter the lord is not partial towards anyone everything depends on one's practical performance of duties in krishna consciousness which helps one control the senses in every respect and conquer the influence of desire and anger and one who stands fast in krishna consciousness controlling the above mentioned passions remain factually in transcendental stage or brahma nirvan the eight fold yoga mysticism is automatically practiced in krishna consciousness because the ultimate purpose is served there is gradual process of elevation in the practice of yam niyam asan pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyan and samadhi but these only preface uh, perfection by but these only preface perfection by devotion service which alone can award peace to human beings it is the highest perfection of life as ends the bhakti vidan purport of fifth chapter of shrimad bhagavad gita in matter of karma yoga or action in krishna consciousness so this last paragraph the topaz is actually summarizing the whole fifth chapter all right so we'll stop here thank you uh, any questions any reflections any comments on what we discussed um hari krishna i have a very funny question i don't know if it applies but practical approach right i mean i'm finding now it's a little heavy hmm. uh, you know when we reading so just a practical approach for a person who is just a beginner hmm. how do we work on senses and anger okay attachment and anger more precise what sure. should we do immediately you know when it's we know it's coming up hmm. so one first have to acknowledge that okay yes i have this you know diagnosis first <laughs> before treating so at least you've got that you've got to the level of diagnosis that yes i have this attachment i have fear i have anger etc etc right so admitting that and then uh you know practicing krishna consciousness more vigorously uh by chanting by uh you know associating with devotees associating with people who are detached associating with people who are fearless that will help greatly right so that what will that do is build your confidence in krishna more and more right our problem is ignorance of our relationship and lack of confidence in krishna of course it's a gradual process right the more and more we show confidence the more and more we show desire to serve the lord uh the more krishna reciprocates and our realization grows like that so it's a gradual process you are on the path doing nicely so it's okay you know slowly and steadily all these things will go away you don't have to worry so much till the time you are following the instructions of guru uh you know studying scriptures uh doing your rounds nicely uh you know and and serving i think you're okay thank you thank you so much krishna bless you hari krishna yes uh, any other thoughts or questions or any reflection something that you liked some statement that's stuck in your mind that you're taking back from the words of the lord or proper i think okay so we we'll stop here uh today we won't be reading one chapter of bhagavad gita for the lack of time it's already 12:55 uh but next week onward certainly we'll continue and next week the class is in the temple okay for those who missed the announcement uh, we'll be having the class from next week in the temple 11 to 1
Okay. Haribo, that's great news. <laughs> yes. And uh, for those who are living outside Bombay, we will still share the link with you so that you can also connect, uh, you know, remotely. But those who are in Bombay, you won't be getting the links. <laughs> you have to come down. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Would you please share the link with us also, no? <laughs> you have to come down to temple. Request, request. Sorry? Request, request. I'm, I'm also requesting you can come down to temple, take darshan of Radha Ras Bihari, uh, spend that time, have prasadam with all of us, and then go home. Prabhuji, yes. the children can I'm... play together. The children will associate together and we can be together. Prabhuji, excuse yes, me for also... one Sunday. Just the coming Sunday because Chahat's last exam is on Monday. So Sunday, just one class I will be online. Then I'll come to temple regularly. So just coming Sunday, send me the link. No, Saturday, na? we are doing on Saturday. Okay, okay, okay. Then, then I can definitely try. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Today also evening I'm going to temple. So Very nice. Yeah. And I think uh, there is a very nice Ram Katha uh, also, which will be starting maybe from today, I guess. I'll be sharing that link also. So 10th, uh, I think, is Ram Navami. So there is a Ram Katha that will get started. So everyone can listen that also very, very beautiful Katha. Uh, I think it will be given by Ram Ru, His Grace Ram Ru, who is the head pujari for Radharas Bihari. Okay, so we'll stop here. Thank you, everyone. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.